Okay, so I would like to welcome you on my uh, talk about this uh, salt managed uh, pixie wall. Keep it for later, <laughs> thanks. <laughs> okay, uh, my name is Andrej, Hole uh, Andrej Holeček. I worked as a software developer in SUSE for roughly, it will be 10 years now. And this, what I will be talking about is some introduction or some uh, describing the process which we implemented in uh, uh, in our uh, uh, in our product at SUSE. So uh, what will the agenda? Uh, it's I'll just talk briefly about what the network boot itself is. That's the easy part. I guess everybody knows what it is. Then uh, I will talk about a little bit about salt, mainly the architecture, all, all the bits and pieces we need to implement the solution. We will I will discuss later. I guess that uh, it will take a little more time because I don't think that salt is as universally known. And the last part is the actual solution, the, the fun bits about uh, the salt boot. So let's start with the with the network boot. Everybody knows, I guess. What is this? Uh, there is the, uh, this definition I found somewhere on uh, Google, but uh, basically you have one server, you have one client machine, you connect them by, uh, using network, you, you have some services on a server, you have some, uh, you boot up the client and you don't have to have any installed system on the client. You will just, it will just work. What's the purpose? Some 20, 30 years ago, I guess thin clients were the thing. So it was one maze, uh, one big use case. You don't have any uh, hard drive, nothing. You just start up the client. Really inexpensive hardware, and every everything is done on a on a server itself. The thing I will be discussing today is mainly the computer provisioning. When you have a plain hard drive, uh, you just plug, uh, plug in the computer, start it up and somehow it will get installed manually or automatically. Uh, so briefly, how does this work? We have BIOS, UEFI, you enable Pixie Boot, Pixie Boot using the DHCP uh, to down, to get the address, you download the NBP, which is network, which is network boot program, where the FT, FTP and, we, and it, it is executed and it's boot. Easy, right? <laughs> okay. I'll just go through the specifics a little, mo little more in the detail. Uh, Pixie boot, I don't know if, uh, I guess everybody, uh, uh, well, just, uh, it stands for pre-boot pre execution environment. Uh, originally it was part of the uh, firmware of your network card. Now network cards are usually on the motherboard, so uh, it's part of the UFI and, or uh, BIOS. Uh, it's so uh, it's client side. It's on the machine you want to uh, you want to start you want to provision uh, on the server side to make it work. It it depends on a DHCP and this DHCP need to have uh, uh, some specific bits enabled. Uh, I've write it twice. Technically, it's the same thing, but it's enough important enough to mention it twice. Uh, DHCP uh, with network boot uh, support. Uh, you have usual configuration when you install the package. You must, you must make, make sure that you add two, two uh, uh, highlighted uh, bits. One is the uh, server name or um, uh, next server. You can either use uh, domain name or uh, the host name or IP address, depends whether you have DNS server or not. And the file name, the file name points to the uh, NVP, which in our case is Pixie Linux. Uh, you can just play, put plain host uh, file name or you can add that some directory if you have it in, in some different locations. We will get to that. Uh, on a TFTP and Pixel Linux side, TFTP you can use uh, generic configuration as you install package uh, from the repositories. Uh, on a Pixel Linux, Pixel Linux is part of the six Linux package. Uh, it is so uh, all the all the bits are installed in uh, user share syslinux uh, syslinux directory. From that, you either copy or do a link uh, to do default is serve uh, the FTP boot directory. Uh, uh, if, if, 
It depends if you have TFTP installed to follow the links or not, either copy or link it. Uh, Pixie Linux itself uh, is, uh, has a co configuration, uh, pixelinux.cfg, and you, there you specify all the options you have when uh, the Pixie Linux is, in, uh, is executed on the client machine. Uh, as you, on, the, on this uh, example, there is one uh, for netboot and one for local boot. Uh, local boot is just booted from hard drive. Netboot is to install to uh, do uh, this network uh, booting. Uh, you specify kernel file name and then kernel command line. Uh, the specific IP append uh, is uh, used that uh, Pixie Linux knows to append uh, the IP address of the server you are installing from to this uh, command line. Okay, and the last part, the last part is uh, uh, what you will need for deployment is of course some kind of boot image or boot instructions. I already mentioned the kernel. Uh, you can use the generic kernel uh, from uh, distribution and uh, initrd. Uh, this is so, there may be some differences between initrd you used from uh, when you are booting the system it's a uh, already installed system and when you are using this uh, um, netboot uh, initrd and this is also one of the place which we will, which we will be changing uh, uh, to incorporate our salt uh, salt support all of these uh, are downloaded by a TFTP and then executed as, uh, as uh, specified in the configuration. So briefly, uh, really uh, fast interaction to the uh, network boot. Uh, now let's talk to uh, a salt. So there were there were many talks. Many you you just today or yesterday you probably heard salt uh, numerous times. It is currently the thing in SUSE. <laughs> uh, so what it is? Uh, salt, it's uh, salt. It's produced by Salt Stack uh, Company. They, they have uh, enterprise version and then they have open source uh, version. I'm using only the open source uh, features here. Uh, this uh, the description is taken from their part. Their uh, part. But if you are not familiar with the salt itself, maybe you know Ansible, uh, Chef, uh, uh, and these similar things. Basically, it's used for uh, remote man management or configuration of uh, uh, machines. Uh, but there are some specifics uh, for salt which we use uh, in our exam in later in uh, in this uh, presentation. And it is, it is uh, event driven. Uh, that is, allows remote execution and it, uh, uh, it's automation of uh, configuration. Uh, the event driven, because uh, we will see there uh, when the code will be executed, uh, when the code is executed on the, uh, on, the min on the machine, client machine, we need to know somehow to uh, let the server know that we are finished and move on. Remote execution, that's true because we need to, to execute from some server a command on, on a client and configuration automation because we want this deployment in our example to be automated. Uh, how the salt looks like? So, uh, uh, the center, the center of salt is, is, is what, a salt master, the central node. Uh, Everything uh, important is happening on this uh, on uh, this uh, machine. It contains the configuration of uh, all this, all your states, all the files you need are contained there. Uh, it manages all the network of clients and uh, manage authentication whether you trust them or not. Uh, as I was mentioning, the clients in Salt they are called minions, and this is basically the managed system. Uh, there are, uh, they are authenticated using the public key cryptography and, uh, uh, to the master. The communication is using the, usually the zero MQ bus. It's uh, encrypted and, uh, one, uh, once you approve that you know this minion during the reg registration, uh, you can uh, rely that it's uh, secure, uh, the communication between. 
Uh, I'm uh, on, here. I mentioned that you need uh, that you have at least these two parts, master and minion. Uh, there are some uh, special circumstances when you can run minion even without master. It calls masterless uh, minions. Uh, and, but uh, this is the possibility that you can use, for example, salt even to manage your, lo your own local node uh, machine without having all the infrastructure. But uh, of course, that's uh, one of the features not usually used. Next, uh, all the things that salt uh, can do is uh, in uh, different, uh, it's called, it has different purposes and uh, it's, uh, uh, in uh, in different modules, okay. So the one of, uh, one of these this is execution modules. These execution modules uh, just do they are just as executing command. Uh, they are, for example, make file append append something to the file, uh, delete files. It does not check whether this it's already configured or not. Uh, if it's, if the condition if there are any, if, well, for example. Uh, file already exists or, or already contains what you want, it just do it. Uh, when you want to check it, uh, when you want to uh, have a declarative, for example, a con a configuration of the serve system, then you have salt states. In salt states, you represent how you wish your system to see, to appear. So, for example, I won't have uh, configured HTTP, or in our case, D DHCP. I just specify that I have this uh, DHCP configuration, and I want that on this uh, minion, the DHCP configuration looks like this. You specify it in this salt state, and then salt, uh, when it, it is executing, you can be sure that uh, it at least first try. Uh, to see if the configuration is as you expect, and if it's not, it will configure it using the execution modules. But uh, salt uh, states itself are mainly for uh, uh, description of the system, how you want it to uh, to appear. Uh, this is two basic uh, things how to configure a system. Now, if you want to share some uh, data between uh, between these uh, minions and uh, uh, master, uh, there are two ways. This is the pillars. Pillars is the thing uh, when you want uh, when you have a set of data on a server and you want to distribute it to the minions. They are considered secure. They are encrypted. With, uh, 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 between even between minions. So if you have pillars for you have pillar for some specific minion, other minions can't see them, and uh, you, uh, your minion can't change it. You can change it only uh, manually, usually only manually on the uh, server. There are of course some workarounds about this, but. Uh, uh, Usually, just when you connect minion and you don't have any support states, minion can't change it, change the uh, pillars. Uh, when you want data from the uh, minion to get to the salt master, you use grains. Uh, grains uh, are, for example, hardware specific uh, or details about the hardware. When the minion registers, it sends its CPU architecture, how much memory it has, IP addresses, and so on. And it sends it back to the master, so you can uh, evaluate them later in, in uh, uh, or on central. You can see what machines have uh, any characteristics or uh, hardware details or everything you want. Uh, the thing is that uh, uh, these because minion can change it, uh, you may or may not trust them because you can. Uh, they can be uh, fabricated, or uh, it's you know, should not not you, you uh, should trust only them. There that mini, that uh, grains you know that uh, they are correct. Uh, okay, uh, one of the things uh, because all, all the states and runners and everything they are executed. Uh, even though they are re the, they are described in a salt master, they are executed on minion. The way it works that when the uh, minion is registered, it synchronizes, uh, it copies or uh, fetches 
all these uh, state files, uh, Python modules, like, whatever it needs back locally to the cache of the salt minion. And when instructed, it executed it on the minion. So there's no way to change uh, that data or anything on a server salt, uh, salt master itself. Uh, if you want to run it on a salt master, there is this module called runners. Uh, runners are, are basically the sim similar as uh, execution modules, but they are running on a server. So this is the one thing how you can, uh, for example, change uh, pillars when you have when you write a runner to modify files on the on the server master. You can of course uh, add or change pillars uh, for minions. Uh, one uh, interesting runner is also the orchestrator orchestrate runner. Uh, interesting on this uh, that it's meant to synchronize multiple uh, machines uh, together. For example, when you are booting a machine, uh, it is registered in DHCP, and uh, when you uh, when it is uh, ready, for example, so you want to uh, change a host name, so you have a salt state to change a host name on a, a minion. And then you have another state which changed the uh, host name on the DNS server. So it's written in like a, a you know, named configuration. And you want it to do it at the same time to prevent some uh, races also. So you can use orchestrate to synchronize multiple states on multiple minions uh, at one together. And the last thing we will need in our uh, uh, in the next uh, present, in the next we will is the reactor. Uh, I was talking about it's all this event driven, where the reactor is where you have the handle, but where it, you put handlers uh, of your to your to your events, and uh, using this you can execute either states, uh, uh, runner runners, or uh, yeah, anything what you specify in it. Um, um, that's what we need from Salt briefly for our uh, for our next uh, task. Okay, so Salt Boot. Uh, we based Salt Boot or Salt Boot in uh, our implementation is based on uh, Net uh, Net Boot, which is provided by Kiwi. That's a special init RD. But uh, today I will talk uh, about this. Uh, if you want to write it uh, from a scratch. Uh, so uh, in, a, in a salt boot stack, we have a client side. When we edit uh, init RD, uh, we provide grains and the fire events. And then we have a server side uh, when we need to write our custom state, how to handle it, uh, runners and execution modules, and of course the pillars. Uh, um, so. Imagine that we have a machine, we just plug into the network and uh, we start it. it. Of course, uh, initial, when, we, when we start the machine, uh, we, uh, I assume we already have the server side configured as was in the first part about network boot. So we have our some, some, some kind of init RD, we have configured the HCP, we have TFTP. Now the machine boots up and it starts the, uh, the init RD. Uh, when you use the init RD from the netboot or some uh, other, it usually doesn't start any minion, anything. It just goes through and, for example, boot it from boot from hard drive. Uh, in uh, init RD, uh, there is some some part always when you can edit your add your own commands. Uh, in netboot init RD provided by Kiwi, uh, it, there is a Linux RC script, and in this Linux RC. Uh, we need to somehow modify it uh, that uh, that uh, at, so at a specific time it will start to listening to our commands. The easiest way, of course, is just on the on the wall on the right place. That's a uh, trademark, right? Uh, insert uh, start of start minion. Uh, the right place is probably after the network is initialized and everything. Uh, uh, you need is already prepared. 
Then you start uh, South Minion. You need to take care that you start South Minion in the foreground, not in the, as a service, because we need to stop this uh, execution of init RD. And uh, from this point, uh, we have uh, the control from the salt server, salt uh, salt master. We have a control of salt minion. Uh, of course, we uh, we keep this in mind. So when we will need to continue with this boot process, when everything is done, we want we need to tell tell this salt minion to terminate itself. Uh, one thing uh, about. Uh, uh, the registration, how it works when the salt within the salt ecosystem, when the salt minion first boot up or connects to the salt master, uh, it will uh, send its own uh, uh, public key and uh, information to the server and just stops until the server accepts it and tries it each 10, 15 seconds to whether it's already registered or not. On the salt master, you have, when you list all the salt minion keys, you will see that you have an approved uh, uh, key there. And until you manually approve it, uh, everything is stopped. There are, of course, way how, uh, ways how to, uh, how to accept keys, but uh, of course, th then uh, some security is compromised. So by default, you need to manually com uh, acknowledge this uh, uh, key. So at this point, uh, our South Minion is stopped until we uh, register it. Uh, as soon as we register it, uh, it will fire up, uh, the South Minion will fire up an event. It's uh, called salt slash minion uh, star slash star. That's uh, uh, all minions always uh, fire this event when they, when they start and they are registered. Uh, so this is the point when we will try to uh, to uh, influence uh, the, ma the minion, and we do that that we configure our own reactor. Uh, there is a react there is a configuration file uh, in the sol ATC salt master. Uh, when you add uh, this this snippet reactor, then you have the ID of the event uh, it was fired. And then you have the file which will contain some uh, state or uh, some state which will handle it. The salt salt prefix salt double uh, salt uh, sorry uh, the salt prefix means that it is uh, somewhere somewhere reachable on the salt file system. Uh, it means that uh, salt is configured to look into some directories and use it as a file system. Uh, which, which from where it can gather the files. Usually all the uh, events um, or the salt state files or uh, it's like a s SRVs, uh, salt, user share salt, user share salt and so on. Uh, they are accessible using the salt itself. Uh, okay, so we have now some file which calls minion, minion start. Uh, sorry. And uh, this is something. So let's say uh, this is our entry point. So let's say that we want to have uh, uh, our disk uh, partition it. So in this, uh, uh, when when you read uh, just a side note, when you read the documentation about salt, they will uh, discourage using something like that because the reactor is running in the main thread. And uh, when you use some intensive tasks in the main thread, it will block the uh, whole salt master. So this is just for demonstration, but usually you will have some re really short uh, state specifying, yes, uh, execute this state. And uh, it will done, it will do execute this state in, in different worker thread. So, but for presentation, uh, uh, you can, I just put it, uh, put it there. Uh, what we see here, this is a this is some identificator, disk partition it. This is whatever you want. It doesn't. It's really your ID, and then there's a module run. That means that the uh, salt will start the execution module. Execution module with the name of partition make parts, and we added some static data like uh, the hard drive. Uh, the FSDA, what type of uh, 
uh, fastest time on uh, whatever you want. And then uh, we have another state, it's called stop, stop minion, and that instructs stop, stop minion to, to kill itself. And it requires uh, on the successful completion of disk partition it. If you would execute it, it will just partition a disk and continue booting. This is of course uh, not really, this is really static configuration. Not all machines have uh, SDA. Not all machines want exactly uh, this kind of partition, this kind of file system. Uh, what we can do with the salt is that there is a, a, a Jinja a templating engine. It's uh, people who are working with Python are quite familiar probably with Jinja, and you can we can use it in a in a salt state itself. So in this example. Uh, I enhanced this uh, this partitioning. I added some Jinja preprocessing, and of course, and, uh, also at the first line, I'm asking the pillar uh, to get the disk name or, or disk or list of disks. In this case, uh, I have a minion which has a minion ID, and somewhere on salt master, I can have a pillar uh, which is a similar file like this in this similar format, assigned only to this pillar. And in this file, file I will have a, a disks list and list of uh, disks I want to uh, partition together with their with their sizes and uh, so on. Uh, what will this uh, Jinja do? What will this does is the Jinja will uh, when it is prepared by Jinja, it will create an, a numerous uh, states for each uh, hard drive uh, uh, partitioned. Uh, it will create another state and then it will be passed to a salt and salt will uh, execute it and uh, uh, try to uh, partition all of this. Uh, this this is fine for some uh, easy uh, easy uh, because of easy parts because uh, Jinja it uh, looks like uh, Python but it's not full full fledged Python. So there is uh, really, uh, when you have some advanced tasks, like, like uh, you want to check whether the partitioning already exists uh, manually, not using uh, some salt tools, or uh, when you want uh, different pieces to, to work and it's uh, complicated to do in templating. Uh, the good thing is that salt uh, uh, knows about salt. Uh, you can write salt state even in Python itself. You usually put it into the somewhere in the salt size file system, for example, uh, SRV slash uh, salt slash. You add the uh, directory underscore state, and there you put up your Python file. Uh, in this Python file, you can uh, define uh, uh, functions, Python functions. Uh, for states, they have uh, some special format, which is not complete here because it's quite longer, but you are supposed to return uh, a result, uh, whether you passed or not, uh, some commands. You should handle test uh, dry run, which I omitted here, but uh, in essence, you can write a uh, Python code. In the in this Python code, you can notice there is an underscore underscore salt underscore underscore. Uh, this will allow you to access to the uh, salt execution modules. There is a similar uh, variable called pillar underscore underscore, underscore pillar underscore underscore that will uh, allow you access to the pillar give, uh, available for this for this minion. And you can use uh, so you can you have you can execute. Uh, another salt modules. You can do pretty much uh, all everything you you want. Uh, and then, uh, because we need some some way to to call this uh, our state, so there is uh, uh, another state in uh, for example in this salt boot SLS. Uh, you, uh, you can see that uh, the where previously was module dot run. I have now salt boot dot uh, check existing, which is the name of the function in this Python module. Uh, perfect. Now, 
Uh, we have this but support. Uh, so in this case, we uh, already can uh, uh, check the partitions. We can partition it when the partitions are not uh, existing. Uh, now, suppose too that we want uh, some modification on the server, as I was telling about the runners. Uh, for a uh, for a runner, uh, you can. Uh, this is uh, um, so. Yeah, uh, we need to send us uh, because all the states are executed on the uh, minion itself. Uh, we need to somehow notify the server. So we start. We send an event. You could send event by uh, uh, send uh, event dot send mod uh, execution module. You see module run and name is execution send. Uh, you can add the ID of this uh, uh, or the tag of this event can be whatever you want. Just the, just the form salt uses format is name slash something slash something. Uh, usually like companies slash component slash uh, it's up for your choosing choosing and you can add any other data you want uh, if you want to include all the grains you just uh, uh, with the grains um, this uh, of course we need to handle it in a reactor so we would need to enhance uh, the reactor with our uh, own handler and then uh, we have a uh, which we, which seems it's called the same. Some of all the all the states or are called in the reactor are called the same, but uh, our uh, machine list state uses uh, salt runner instead of uh, uh, module run or uh, uh, or salt orchestrator or something like that. So the runner. So uh, salt will know that this kind of code should be run on the uh, server itself. And now, because salt runner, this, the, the salt runner modules are isolated itself. Uh, the modules provided by salt stack itself. So, but you want to call a uh, usual uh, salt module, salt execution module. Uh, we have, uh, for this, there is a name salt.cmd. Salt.cmd is a salt runner module, which allows you to call salt execution module. It's getting a little, little, uh, complex here, but, uh, that's, that's how they do it. And, uh, salt, see, uh, we call the execution module called file append, which, uh, takes a path and arguments you want to you want to up append uh, to this file. <laughs> and of course, uh, I can't go over a complete solution, how uh, how to, imp to do all of this, what you will need to finish as a uh, uh, reader's example, is uh, to deploy the machine, deploy, to have an image, uh, deploy image, and one big thing which I did not covered here is uh, you need uh, somehow to preserve the uh, your minions uh, 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 certificate and the keys uh, all that which will, which with uh, which uh, it was registered to the salt master because if you do not do imagine that you re reboot you already deploy your image you partition this uh, hard drive everything and then you restart the restart the computer and again it will start the salt minion and if it's not uh, uh, registered it will all again wait and so on what you can do uh, is that when for example this this salt state is finished after the salt minion is uh, terminated uh, you in the, in the Linux RC script, you can take uh, a slash ATC uh, salt minion. Uh, set it at the, in, under this directory, there are a certificate and some other fa configuration files. You can compu uh, co copy it on the hard drive. And then uh, at the beginning of the Linux RC, before you start salt minion, copy this file from hard drive uh, to the uh, Memory, memory base init RD. So when next reboot, 
salt can use reuse the certificate which already used for certification you have to wait for all the uh, all the uh, things to happen again but how it look if you do all of this uh, how it looks like well this is regular screen from a uh, you may be well know it there is a there is a tftp prefix boot which uh, in my example i i uh, omitted but it's uh, uh, the only difference it uh, you see it loaded the kernel it lo it's loading the init rd now it all starts and now this is uh, in this case it's waiting this is exactly the thing about the registration of the minion uh, to the master uh, of course uh, you will in if you will be implementing this by yourself you will need somehow to get uh, this data to the apply mode uh, fortunately apply mode now in sample read supports the multi-line commands uh, yeah. and you see there is a, the first is the minion id uh, the minion ID is taken uh, usually from a machine uh, machine ID system D uh, service, and the second line is the fingerprint. That's the fingerprint of the cer of the certificate it's used uh, to register itself. The same the same uh, ID, the data you will see on the salt master when you are using salt uh, key, for example, to to, to see them. As soon as you accept them, accept this, uh, accept the, set of the minion, uh, it will do its stuff. In our case, in, when the screenshot is taken, we already we uh, have uh, all the salt states checking what uh, hardware architecture it is, what hardware type it is. Uh, we have a minion here uh, which specified it for this machine type. Use this partitioning and use that image. So this is now downloading the image. Uh, once downloading it is, once download is done, uh, you can all, all verify it. This is all done in a salt Python. After the verification, of course, a booting system, which means that the last last thing which uh, salt minion printed and then terminates itself and it ended in uh, booted uh, booted server. Uh, booted client and uh, that's uh, from my side that's all from my side uh, well one note uh, I don't know if you were on the presentation about uh, uh, project uni because all of this project uni uses salt it's uh, salt it's deeply integrated in, in it and all of this so uh, this basically integrated also in this uh, project unis. So when you will uh, check it out later on a GitHub, uh, there are already uh, states which handle this. Uh, uh, well, they are not yet there, but they will be there. <laughs> you know, uh, hopefully uh, next uh, in the, in the month, and uh, uh, you will. Not, don't have to write all the events, but your yourself. But uh, you can check it out and uh, see what else you can do with to uh, play with uh, uh, networking installation and, and so on. Okay, I'm open to questions. Or okay, there's one question. Uh, <laughs> But it's not okay. Um, you're doing full installation on a system, right? Uh, in uh, you, well, in this so in the states, you can do whatever you want. So right. uh, in the example, in the screenshots, it was based on an image. So the image is already pre-built by the Kiwi, and it's done all it. But it's. Uh, so it's not like manual installation, it's all a deployment of one image. Uh, right, so one can rather compare it to an Autodesk installation rather than an interactive manual installation. Yeah, it's automated, but uh, you know, Autodesk is doing the installation itself, so you can use different sources in image, you have always the same 
uh, for all the machine you have the, it's the same image when you use AutoYast and something changed for example new uh, new uh, tumbleweed is published you can have half machines old one machines new yeah okay so I okay. wonder where, where you see potential connection points for the future comparing to AutoYast as well as the Yast installer as mm -hmm. well as your approach uh, uh, of course there is so uh, I don't see a problem to integrate to integrating the yeah, AutoYast installer in, in Assault itself. That's that's pretty straightforward. Uh, from my perspective, the harder part would be if uh, AutoYast decided to use Salt uh, for some uh, uh, management or configura uh, configuration. But I don't see it as a, a blocking problem, but I see that uh, it def uh, definitely needs some need some work okay, but thanks. possible uh, second question how do you test this well this is all tested in open qa uh, um, we have a complete uh, architecture of about this including building of images and so on uh, uh, but uh, uh, even the screenshots are from from the open qa uh, the project uni which we used and, uh, the, and of course the original SUSE manager it's test in the cucumber so they have uh, capybara and, and all of, and all of this testing about it uh, but uh, our point our part is all uh, open qa just and this includes the pixie boot server is it also yes controlled it includes the pixie uh, pixie and boot updated thing. and, and uh, has the has the files that you need provided by the test? Yeah, which part? Uh, uh, like the init RD. Yeah, because it's built, we use Kiwi uh, itself, and of course uh, we have our own package which is called Saltboot, uh, which is not yet uh, uh, public, even if it's not it's not uh, uh, too much work. Uh, but uh, there is uh, these packages which Kiwi used. And uh, it built in the OpenQA instance. Uh, we used uh, salt states already. Uh, it's called formulas. There are some uh, salt states which are pro provided by uh, upstream, and we use them for configuring the HCP, DNS, TFTP, all of this. Uh, so we don't we don't do this manually. We just this uh, project uh, or the system manager configures it for us during using the uh, salt uh, formulas. And then uh, uh, the Kiwi is built by uh, of SUSE Manager itself also. And then just we hook up the third machine as, uh, as to, to test it, to boot it up. And we test it and open QA, everything checks out. And then on the graphical image, we use a uh, regular slice uh, test uh, suit for X11. Any other question? Okay, I think I was already signed. I'm almost out of time. So thank you for your attention and have hacking. <laughs>